now uh, hi friends now in continuing with this unplugged series that we have initiated on dams facebook page and on the dams daily youtube uh, channel we have uh, you know initiated a series where we discuss a clinical problem followed by a integrated approach to the problem today what i have done is i have chosen specifically a neurological case with a usmle style of asking question and uh, we'll we'll try to you know figure out some mcqs one liners out of it and try to see the integrated approach now what exactly is a large length question whenever you appear for a exam where you have a long stem question it is actually build up of multiple small building blocks so let us try and see them and let us try to solve the first question that i want to learn today okay now i already warned you that the question would be very long Okay, so this is a 22-year-old man. So we're dealing with a relatively young man, returning from overseas work ex assignment, presents with post-tussive headache. That means the headache after coughing. Headache has been bothering him for two years, long-standing history, and initially was only occurring after coughing. Gradually, it became more progressive. He started to seek opioid medications from different providers. and he says now that medication is the only way he can you know live with it he has also difficulty in swallowing for the past two weeks he has hard time swallowing both liquid and solids and there is subtle uh, left handed numbness and weakness that you find on the exam remainder of the exam is within limits mri of the cervical spine is obtained given the presumed central etiology of his symptoms and the question is what is the treatment for this condition So so far we see, you know, we have something relatively young man, headache getting worse on coughing, gradually increasing, swallowing difficulty, and some neurological deficit in the left hand. This is what the symptoms are. So with this we are not able to make a diagnosis. So we have to look at the second part of the puzzle. So when you look at the second part of the puzzle, they have given a MRI image for this. Now, when you look at this MRI, can you identify the MRI image? this is a cervical spine t2 weighted mri this is a cervical spine t2 weighted mri i want you to take and put your eyes at the foramen of magnum look at the foramen magnum what are you able to see are you able to feel that the foramen magnum looks a bit crowded bit crowded no now please see now look at the cerebellum again so in front of you you see the cerebellar vermis and do you see the lower part of the cerebellum which is the tonsil is actually going below the foramen magnum and do you see in the upper part of the cervical cord are you able to see something white hyper intense as uh, same signal as the csf now let us try and put the picture together so uh, post tussive headache young male swallowing difficulty MRI cervical spine is provided to you and you are able to see cerebellar tonsil going below the foramen magnum and a CSF signal area in the upper cervical cord what could that be syrinx patient has a syringomyelia with tonsillar herniation what should i think of so i should think of chiari malformation so this is a patient with chiari malformation and this is the this patients usually have a small posterior fossa with a tonsillar descent that leads to crowding at the area of the foramen of magnum that compromises the csf flow dynamics and the cervical cord and this is the, the resultant syrinx that you see here okay and i'm sure many of you would know if you add to this uh, tonsillar herniation and a small posterior fossa if i add to it spina bifida that becomes the classical arnold chiari malformation that is also called as chiari type 2 so what do you have in front of you you have a patient with chiari type 1 with syringomyelia but that is not the question the question that we have asked is because this is integration you have a clinical problem mri but the question is what is the treatment so i have given you a series of choices you have to choose the treatment so the question is actually neurosurgical question now what will you do will you do a syringeo peritoneal shunt pleural shunt immobilization acetazolamide anterior cervical discectomy and fusion suboccipital craniectomy okay look at the choices 
So I feel this is the kind of question that you might get in the next Nimhans exam or in a central exam like AIMS or you are preparing for USMLE, they might ask you a question like this. Putting it all together, we know the patient has uh, you know CSF flow dynamics alteration at the foramen magnum that is chari malformation leading to syringomyelia. Now what should I do? Shunt usually we would do in a syrinx if it is resistant to decompression surgeries. Immobilization you would might have heard of you know you do immobilization in a patient with cervical trauma trauma acetazolamide you, you will never hear of acetazolamide in such a condition there is no disc herniation at all so the problem is not disc herniation the problem is tonsillar herniation leading to compromise of CSF flow dynamics at the foramen of magnum so do you think the answer should be anterior cervical discectomy no so what do you think the answer should be answer is sub occipital craniectomy you understand so when I do a craniectomy what will happen you will decompress the area of the foramen magnum and usually these people the syrinx usually spontaneously resolves after craniectomy okay most of the time it is the compression because you have to understand the in the foramen of magnum you have space like this much and normally it is the cervical cord which is passing through now the tonsil is also passing through leading to crowding and that is pinching the spinal cord leading to the syrinx and that decompression craniectomy is the actually the treatment of the choice it is not shunting it is not immobilization the answer is decompressive suboccipital craniectomy usually a syrinx in carry type 1 malformation would resolve after craniectomy okay so that is what we call as the integrated approach you have some questions based on image some clinical finding and they ask you the treatment or the surgical ap approach and a patient with carry type 2 would have a myelomeningocele and usually would be presenting at birth with spina bifida so that is the idea to remember and how for the people who are listening to us today I also want to tell you when somebody has Arnold Chiari malformation also called as also called as Chiari type 2 malformation because the cerebellum descends down the cisterna magna is obliterated and the shape of the cerebellum becomes like a banana so in carnal cherry malformation which is associated with spina bifida the cerebellum is wrapped around the brain stem in a banana like fashion so sometimes they ask you this question directly as well and when there is a spina bifida the cranial contents are being pulled down craniospinal contents are being pulled down and you the skull of the baby develops frontal indentation that is called as the lemon shaped skull that is again a finding in r not cherry malformation so when we do a antenatal ultrasound if i see a lemon shaped skull or if i see a banana shaped cerebellum i always scan the spine of the baby to look for spina bifida okay and also remember in this r not cherry malformation the cisterna magna is obliterated another thing to remember is in Arnold Cherry malformation the cranial contents are pulled down so even the tectal plate which is the tectum which is the posterior part of the midbrain gets pulled down so sometimes we use the word tectal beaking sometimes we use the word tectal beaking okay Th these are some important points to remember when we are dealing with this Chiari malformation so Chiari type 1 always remember has no spina bifida it is the carry type 2 which has the spina bifida which is called as the r not cherry malformation and also remember these patients if i have to make a clinical question i might actually say the patient has sensory loss at the in cape like distribution which is typical of our intramedullary syrinx and they might you know play around with the words and you know from your knowledge of medicine the syrinx can be traumatic ineffective tumors but do not forget carry malformation as a cause of syringomyelia like you had in this case i hope you enjoyed this episode of the dams Unpl medicine unplugged on youtube please follow us on dams daily channel of youtube for more such imp informative videos and please follow us on dams daily page on facebook to be connected with us to make medical education interesting is our motto and to integrate various subjects through this mode medium is our motto i hope you enjoy this episode do write back to us do write back to me on my Facebook profile or my Twitter handle and please follow us on my Damsidi channel. Thank you very much.